Hi, in this video of C programming language, we are going to begin a very new and very important concept that is functions. Basically, whenever you start writing a program in C language, we have a function called main inside which we are writing all the code so far. But in order to do the separation of concerns, we can define multiple functions and can invoke them when required. So let's discuss something more about functions as whenever we want to define a function, so what will we do inside it? A function will do a specific task whenever it will be called. So for example, if you have a big program to do and it is co the combination of multiple things that you can perform in a program. So basically, you can do each and individual task inside a separate function and whenever it is required, you can make a call of that. So simply, you can divide a code into separation fu separate functions. Logically, the division usually is so each function performs a specific task. All right. But whenever you will start writing a function, it will not be executed as uh, simply, right? Even when you execute a program, the system calls the main method and that's why whenever you execute it, you get the output. So even the main function is invoked for the execution. And similarly, whatever method you will create, it will also be invoked. A function is known as the various names like method or subroutine or a procedure means you can call it with the different names but ultimately the things that we are going to perform is same. Uh, subroutine means there is a main program and you can just part uh, means classify them with the different sub programs or procedures or subroutines you can call it anything. Now once you plan to define a function how should you do that? So basically the syntax is the return type, the name of the function and then the list of arguments in the parenthesis. So let's see what this is all about. Basically whenever you create a function as I said you will have to call it. So you will call a function with its name. So max in this example max is the name of my function. Now. If I will call a function without a parameter or if it is not returning anything, then what you can do, you can simply just call it and it will execute all the set of statements which it is carrying. But if you want to pass some values inside a function in order to process that, you can pass the parameters or arguments you can also call. So as here, I want in the max function, I want to check like out of these two numbers, which number is greater. So for that, for supplying the value, what I'll do, I'll just say int num1, int num2. So basically these are what? These are the parameters. Whenever I will make a call to this function, I will have to pass these two values. Now after the processing, which type of value it is giving you in return? If you don't want to return any value, you can simply write void here. We have already discussed about void. That means when you don't need to pass, pass any value means it is having no value inside. So you can do and you can pass a void keyword right here. But since here you can see it is int and by default in C language, whenever you don't even if you not mention the return type, it will be integer by default. So, but here clearly it is mentioned that at the end, I can return a value of integer type. So here it is the uh, signature. Now, that was the definition, but in C language, you can also define or you can also describe the prototype means the structure of a function. All right. We also call it a function declaration. So before defining the actual function, if you want, you can give a prototype like this. In prototype, you don't need to give the definition, rather you will specify the return type, whether it's a void or any other type, then function name and then the list of parameters. By the time you are giving a list of parameters, either you can also name the variable name, it means the name, you can also pass the name of parameters or you can skip that. By the time you are defining, then it is mandatory to pass the name of the uh, parameters, but here at the time of prototype, means when you are declaring the function, it is optional like you can also skip the name of parameters. 
so this is how you can declare a function in practically we will notice like when it is required to pass the prototype and when it is not similarly once the declaration is done the next thing is to define the function so here this is the function definition with the same signature signature should remain same at every point whether you are declaring it or defining it or maybe invoking it so here you can see uh, int max and then a couple of arguments and here the definition at the end you can see I have used a return keyword return keyword will basically terminate the execution of the function so we must put it at the last all right uh, means logically we must put it otherwise syntactically it is not incorrect even you will put it before right so uh, return result and you observe that result is also of integer type and that is what we have told in the signature that it will return the value of integer type and at the end we are doing so now once you have defined a function as I said you will have to invoke it you will have to call it otherwise nothing will happen so that is how you can uh, invoke during the invocation during the calling of a method you should not pass the return type rather just the name of the function along with the parameters so here you can see I'm calling the function called f it's a name function f right and here I'm just calling it there is no return time mention if I have some arguments in this structure in the signature of function then I will also pass the list of arguments but here since we don't have so I will not pass any argument as I said during the complete process the signature of the method should not be changed so if here I have not passed the argument even here I cannot pass otherwise there will be a mismatch and it will give me an error now here you can see I have two return statements return 11 and return 12 so what it will actually do it's just a uh, means a demo for it's just for demo purpose so return 11 as soon as this first statement will be executed the control will come out of the function and this statement will never execute so if you will print the value of i here you will notice it is getting 11 so let's start doing some practicals for these functions and we'll see how to do all the three parts that is declaration definition and invocation so here we have a very basic program of functions in which I have created a function of name sum and I have also specified all the three parts of the function that is on the top you can see it is the prototype means the function definition declaration in this declaration what I have done I have just specified the structure or I should say signature of the method so here void will be the return type that means I'm not going to return anything and sum which is the name of the function and after that there are parentheses inside which I have not specified anything that simply means it is a zero parameterized method later I'll also show you how to create the parameterized one now inside this main you can see I have invoked this function but for the invocation I should also have the definition of that particular method which I have just done right after the main method so here you can see void sum having the very same signature along with the definition so in the definition what I have done I have taken a variable total in which I have added two numbers that are 10 and 20 these are the hard coded values for now and after that I'll print that so as soon as this main method will be invo invoked by the system it will call the sum method and that invocation will cause this addition and later this value will be printed so let's execute and see how, what is the output so as expected total is 30 that is 10 plus 20 but such kind of methods may not be very much useful because every time when you will call this sum function it will add the same values every time so it is better like if I will be able to give some values to it so that I can get a different result in all the invocations so for that for passing the value I'll just pass the parameters in the definition declaration as well as in the invocation so like int x comma int y 
so these are the param parameters for the uh, declaration now the same signature will be followed by the uh, definition also so here int x comma int y all right these are the formal parameters means currently x and y are not containing anything but here whenever I will call it I will definitely pass some value from the actual parameter and whatever is passed will just sum that up and will print the value so here I'll have to pass a couple of values let's say 10 30 this time and maybe I can also pass the variables like just now I pass the constant figures that is 10 and 30 similarly let's say a is equal to 15 b is equal to 50 and then when I'll call it again a comma B so the para value of first argument will be copied to the first argument second will be copied to second so there are two invocations when I will execute I will get the result accordingly that is 10 plus 30 is 40 15 plus 50 is 65 as simple as that so this is also showing the reusability I will not have to do all these things again and again rather I'll just call this function and whatever is defined it's just a demo purpose function but whatever you will define while working on a function it will be executed every time you will invoke that now the thing comes when I use void as the return type of a function it means it will not return a value suppose this is not my ultimate goal but this adding of addition of two numbers is just an intermediate process of my big task so what I want I simply don't want to print this value rather I want to get that value for some further operations so for such scenarios I can use the return type apart from void so in that particular situation first of all a developer has to uh, judge like which type of value it requires like here the result is going to be integer for me so I will write int here and int here during the invocation I never specified the return type but just the name and the parameters of the function since I have specified int as a return type so rather than printing that value I will return that so as soon as I will return it totally depends on the calling environment like what they want to do if they want to print the value they can simply print it or if they want to use the value in for some other process they can do that as well so here since there is a return type I will define one more variable that is result and before invocation I will use return is equal to because this sum is returning an integer type of value so result is also of integer type as soon as you will invoke return will get the actual value so let's print the value of result like total person D let's line break then result and similarly after the second invocation also I'll do the same thing so alright I missed something I guess okay not return its result so let's execute this so 40 40 I think I just pass the same parameters every time alright sorry I forgot to specify the result out here so result now it will work fine alright so this is what we expected so this is how you can start working with the basic implementation of the declaration definition and invocation as here one thing more you can see like main method is defined before the sum so if in this particular case I will remove this declaration so on the basis of different compilers I'll get the output for example here when I will execute that I will definitely get the result but in the result you may get a warning or error message of the prototype so make sure if you are defining the method after the invocation you should pass the declaration in the very beginning like I already did earlier alright so this is how you can start working with the basic functionality of methods or functions